It's Wednesday, October 13, and the time for your body yesterday morning news of the Investigations continue into the circumstances surrounding the discovery of a body at Kendall Hill B. Christ Church. Police spokesman acting station sergeant Michael Blackman said the decomposing body was discovered following a report by residents around 11 a.m. on Tuesday of a strong odor in an open area at the location. The identity of the deceased has not yet been established. For the latest on that developing story, you can visit our website www.barbidistoday.bb or any of our social media platforms. In other news, there has been a decline in the number of fraud attempts in Barbados. That's according to new research set to be released soon by the Financial Intelligence Unit. Acting Inspector Sonia Thompson of the Royal Barbados Police Force Financial Crimes Investigations Unit said, Police have seen a reduction in the number of reports of fraud since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. She said in many instances, it was discovered that trusted family members were the ones carrying out the fraud using their loved one's bank cards or forging their signatures. Most of the fraud that we are seeing relate a lot to ATM withdrawals. And sometimes when persons come in and then they, they make that report, we get the footage and everything to support it. And when we show them the footage, it's a case where they decide, oh, I'm not going to prosecute anymore. It's a family member. It's someone I know. So those are one of the things that we've been seeing quite a, a lot. And prior, we were seeing in terms of documents, fraudulent documents and stuff. But I know we've been doing quite a bit of training with some of the institutions. So we're not seeing those fraudulent documents as much as we were seeing them earlier in the year. According to the research by the Financial Intelligence Unit, just over 100 fraud attempts were made between March 2019 and February 2021 at financial institutions, valuing more than $6 million. The unit's director, Cook Tate, gave a sneak peek into some of the findings, which is to be made public in a matter of days. What we found was interesting because we identified 55 matters actually of a, a value of $4.8 million relating to attempts to gain money through fraud. And we found that 22 of those 65 matters were deemed to be successful. In fact, the, the dollar value behind that amount was Barbados 477,000. All right. The, in the second period, and this is the, the actual COVID context that we're talking about, we identified 47 attempts at, at the fraud institution and the dollar value was $1.4 million, um, with eight of those attempts being regarded as successful. Right? So for us, the, the, the total attempts, the total um, dollar value of fraud over those two periods was $6.2 million, while the successful attempts total just under uh, $600,000, or approximately 10% of the overall value. Now, that told us that for us um, in Barbados, the appetite for, for fraud, let us say, was perhaps not as high as in other countries because we have seen a decrease in actual fraudulent attempts and so on. St. Andrew MP George Payne has taken issue with government's anti-corruption record while lawmakers move to complete the reform of a 101-year-old Prevention of Corruption Act. Payne said the administration and his party have openly dropped the ball on fighting the corruption and mismanagement they had accused the former Democratic Labour Party administration of committing. Speaking during debate in Parliament on Tuesday on the Prevention of Corruption Bill 2021, he referred to the appointment of former Finance Minister Chris Sinclair to the Jobs and Investment Council back in April 2020 and questioned the rationale behind hiring the DLP member to such an important financial committee. For the life of me, it was a little flabbergasted. When you could come two years after having attacked the Minister of Finance 
I'm going to attack the policies of this of, 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 of the Democratic Labour Party. I'm going to attack the mismanagement of the Democratic Labour Party. When you could come and make that same Minister of Finance an advisor in the Barbados Labour Party and as part of an, uh, of an investments council um, within the Barbados Labour Party. So, Mr. Speaker, that speaks. That speaks, Mr. Speaker, to condemnation. That speaks to a condemnation, a condemnation of the same policies that you attacked during uh, the election campaign. Minister of Energy, Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Kerry Simmons, has conceded that government needs to move away from the consolidation of wealth in Barbados. Speaking during debate on the Prevention of Corruption Bill 2021 in Parliament on Tuesday, Simmons agreed with suggestions by opposition leader Bishop Joseph Averly that a select few will benefit in from government projects. Simmons admitted that there needed to be more equal distribution of those projects. And the issue developmentally, Mr. Speaker, sir, cannot be about individualistic finger pointing. There has to be a point at which intelligent people sitting in the parliament must be prepared to confront the developmental issues of the country and speak to them as they are. And what is the developmental issue? The developmental issue in my humble submission, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that Barbados has to confront the consolidation of wealth wheresoever it exists and howsoever it exists and treat to that problem by way of building up new opportunities for people across sectors. We are speaking effectively to a perpetuation of consolidation of wealth, consolidation of opportunity, consolidation of access, consolidation of finance, all of those things in the hands of a small pocket. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional news now. Guyana recorded six additional COVID-19 related deaths within a 24-hour period, pushing the overall death toll to 848. And according to this report from Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana, the majority of the cases came from a single region. Almost 50% of the total number of deaths have occurred in Region 4, according to the Ministry of Health. The Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, revealed that of the 848 persons who have died from COVID-19 in Guyana, a total of 414 of them were from Region 4, which is home to the nation's capital. We would have seen 43 persons uh, who died of COVID in Region 1, 34 in Region 2, 124 in Region 3. Um, in Region 4, we had 414. In Region 5, 43. The minister further explained that Region 6 has recorded 65 deaths and there were 39 deaths in Region 7. Region 8 has only recorded 8 deaths, while Region 9 has seen 23 deaths and 58 persons have died from the virus in Region 10. Apart from the growing number of COVID-19 related deaths, the health minister said the high number of hospitalizations is also a cause for concern. And finally, the International Monetary Fund's latest outlook 
for the global economy, which was released on Tuesday, warned that the threats to the economic recovery from last year's COVID-19 disruptions are growing. Point this Reuters TV report. The International Monetary Fund on Tuesday cut growth outlooks for the United States and other major industrial powers, saying supply chain disruptions and inflation pressures are holding back the global economy's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. In its World Economic Outlook, the IMF trimmed its 2021 global growth forecast to 5.9 percent from the 6 percent forecast it made in July. It left a 2022 global growth forecast unchanged at 4.9 percent. But the IMF said the minor revision masks major downgrades for some countries. Global manufacturing has been slammed by shortages of key components like semiconductors, clogged ports, and a labor crunch. IMF chief economist Gita Gopinath said they expect inflation to return to pre-pandemic levels next year, but warned that persistent supply disruptions could cause problems. We have never seen a recovery of this kind, where you have shortages in the labor market at the same time that you have high levels of unemployment, the fact that you have ports that aren't able to uh, offload container ships. So this is very unique, uh, and we have to be particularly vigilant. The United States is taking the brunt of these effects, and the IMF slashed its 2021 U.S. growth forecast by a full percentage point to 6% from 7% in July, a level that was seen as the strongest pace since 1984. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.